I'm Matthew Glenn. I'm the Vice President of Product Management at Illumio. And we're going to do a bunch of demonstrations of the Illumio Adaptive Security Platform. And uh, we're all about adaptive segmentation. If you don't know what that is, that's segmentation that works in your existing data center. It works in private cloud. It works in public cloud. It works across all these different things, right? Um, and if you don't know why segmentation is important, segmentation is really the optimal way to reduce the exposure of your critical applications, right? And when and if you are breached, and most people are breached at some point, it's really the most proven way to prevent the lateral move, movement of attacks once they've happened, okay? And I'm not just saying that. You can read what Gartner has to say about it. Uh, so you don't know a lot about Illumio? Here's some of our customers, okay? We have everybody from, you know, people like the Creative Artists Agency in Los Angeles, Oak Hill Advisors, a little SaaS company here in San Francisco called Salesforce, uh, as well as large banks like Morgan Stanley. And they're all using the product for different types of segmentation. And I'm gonna give you demos of all these right here today. Um, for instance, uh, Morgan started off by using the product for uh, separating their dev, prod, UAT staging environments from one another, but they didn't have to change the network to do that, okay? Um, it's a really important point. And uh, we're gonna move our way through our wheel of segmentation as we go through this. So we're gonna, you know, I talked about Morgan using coarse grain. I'll do demos of micro and nano segmentation as we, go, as, you, as we move through these demos here today. And the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how you can visualize your application dependencies. We're going to show you how we could do segmentation that adapts to changes in your environment. And then we'll show you how we eliminate policy sprawl. And we're going to show you how we can detect a breach once it's happened. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to show you a bunch of different points that we actually are going to be able to enforce on. We can enforce uh, segmentation on bare metal servers, OK? We could do it on VMs. And that's how we allow you to work in Microsoft Azure and uh, Amazon. And we're going to show you this in demos. We can do it on containers. We'll show you enforcement on security groups. We'll show you some enforcement on those switches, Cisco and Arista switches, as we move through the demo here today. So my last slide before we get into the land of actual demos is just to quickly orient you to the architecture of what you're about to see so you understand what's happening as it's happening, OK? Our architecture starts off with this thing on your left, which is context and telemetry, which we pull out of hosts. How do we do that? We can put an agent on the host to just suck out what, what are the interfaces on it, what operating system's running. Um, we can suck it out of CMDBs. We can suck it out of your orchestration systems. This information is sent up to this thing on your left, which is the policy compute engine. I want you to really think about it like it's a brain. You'll write natural language policies going into the policy compute engine. And what it's going to do is it's going to compute the perfect, most optimal security for every one of your workloads and send it back down where we actually put the enforcement in the optimal enforcement point for those hosts. So it could be uh, IP tables. It could be the Windows filtering platform. The key point I want each one of you to walk away with is we're going to basically use what's already there to do segmentation. Don't forklift your switches. We'll just add more value to them. Don't change your hypervisor. We're going to do enforcement at the most logical enforcement point. As it turns out, you have a stateful firewall in every one of your Linux hosts. It's called IP tables. It works in Azure. It works in Amazon. It works in your existing data center. You have a stateful firewall in Windows. It's the Windows filtering platform. We showed a couple years ago turning your your load balancers into yet another enforcement point, and we're going to demo switches here today, OK? I am now officially done with my PowerPoint. Let's do some live demos. Um, so all, we're going to start with visualizing your application dependencies. And this is where all of our customers get started. It's called illumination. Illumination is really like an MRI for your data center. We're starting at the, sort of this Google Maps view of what's going on here. I'm going to ask Anoop to go into the United States and take a look at what's going on. Illumination, we're going to show you your application to application interactions. And I want to draw your eyes to some very important things in case you're sort of missing. First thing is, some of these are in Amazon. Some of them are in Azure. Okay? You'll notice there's a PCI environment down here. The thing is, we're not showing you network topologies. We're showing you application topologies. Because let's face the fact, the network it doesn't matter. The application does, OK? Um, and you also notice like there's this PCI thing. We're going to do some demos on all these things as we migrate through this demo today, OK? The thing you're also going to notice is that there's these arrows, right? Those arrows indicate that there's flows that we've detected between the individual workloads. You'll notice there's red lines and green lines. A green line indicates that we've detected traffic between the individual workloads, and you've written a policy that would allow it. A red line indicates that we've detected traffic between the individual workloads, and you've not yet written a policy that would allow it. Very straightforward stuff, simple to understand. What I haven't told you is something that's really cool. In this illumination mode, we allow you to incrementally build 
and test your policies on a workload by workload basis, on a application by application basis. So one of these applications could be in this mode called build mode, where we're going to write every one of the ACLs. But the last rule is permit any any log alert. Why is that important? You can start to build and test application segmentation policies without breaking the actual application. And when you're ready and when you feel comfortable, you can knock off that last line and go to full enforcement mode. Okay. So um, so you can basically move into full enforcement mode when you see fit. Okay. Very important point there because no one wants to break an application to do segmentation. You want to basically move into it and use it at whatever rate or speed you want to, okay? So we just got done visualizing your application dependencies. Let me show you what we do with that, okay? And what we do with that is what we do adaptive segmentation, okay? So what I'd like to do now is uh, we're going to show you segmentation on bare metal VMs, and we're really going to get to the network to do this. In our wheel of segmentation, we're going to move into what we call micro-segmentation. And we're really going to hone in on one of our applications. Let's go into this point of sale application and really sort of uh, hone in on it because there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. So uh, it's basically brought up this point of sale application in the PCI environment, OK? Let me, let's just look at what's going on because we're going to do some really slick stuff on it. I see traffic coming in to the load balancer, something we can enforce on. That's talking to a web tier. We see these red lines, which we'll take care of in a minute, and it's going in through these switches to these NetApp filers. The switches it's traversing are sitting right below this gentleman's hands. We basically announced a couple weeks ago that we can do enforcement on Cisco and Arista switches, okay? So we can actually write the rules down to that. So let me demo that for you. So Anoop's gone in to the, um, to the console of a Cisco switch, and you can see we've already written some ACLs in there, okay? And those ACLs correspond to the interfaces on this processing tier. Now, I didn't say this was about static segmentation. It's about adaptive segmentation, right? So let's imagine this credit card processing app. It's the holidays. We need to add more capacity for it. So if we want to add more capacity for it, traditionally, we call up the security team and say, oh, I need to add more capacity. Can you please change all the firewalls, the SSH in? They make a bunch of errors. They break the application. You're in trouble. A noob's going to auto scale that processing tier. And the brain that I talked about, the policy compute engine, is going to basically take in the information that there's a bunch of new work loads in the processing tier, it's going to update the ACLs dynamically on these Cisco and Arista switches. So he's already done that part of it. And let's see what it actually put into the Cisco switches, OK? It just updated the ACLs dynamically. And so the question you're probably asking yourself is, how the heck did they do that, OK? How did we do that? And the answer, just as the same way as we activate the enforcement points that are in IP tables and your switches, we're just going to leverage what's already there. In this case, we're just using the APIs that are in your Cisco Arista switches to program them. Those are available to you and to me, but we've done the integration for you to basically enact every single, every potential enforcement point, regardless of where they're running. Pretty cool stuff. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how we eliminate policy sprawl. And I want to basically take care of these red lines here. So I just told you how we're going to update the ACLs based on what's going on. Let me show you how you actually write a policy with Illumio. I'm going to ask you guys to take a step forward, please, because I'm going to get in big trouble in a minute. OK, so let me show you how we eliminate policy sprawl. So um, with Illumio, oops. You don't need to use any. Uh, you don't need to know any IP addresses, no subnets, no zones, no VLANs, in order to write a policy. Okay. What you do need to be able to do is be able to use a natural language description of what you want to have happen. So you literally use the language of the network to make things work. Okay. So. A noob has already clicked on the red line, so we get some interesting information. I see, in this case, the web tiers talking to the processing tier, and specifically to that open ERP port. That's what those red lines reflect, OK? So let me show you how I write a policy here. Do I need to know every one of the IP addresses of the processing tier and the web tier to make that happen? No, right? All I have to do is use a natural language description about what I want to have happen. So let's do this, Anoop. Um, Anoop's clicked on Add Rule, and I just describe in natural language what I want. I want the web tier to talk to the processing tier, and specifically to the open ERP port, OK? Now, you'll notice this is in the PCI environment, right? Um, and because it's in the PCI environment, I want to basically make sure all traffic in motion is encrypted. So if a noob clicks that Secure Connect button, it'll basically enact IPsec. And we could do that Linux to Linux, Windows to Windows, or Linux to Windows with a click of a button. And that brain I talked about will take care of all the key management, OK? So we basically um, 
created this natural language policy. Now, a noob's going to actually apply that policy, and he's already done it. And what you're going to see is all the red lines turn to green. What happened in the background is that Brain went out and wrote inbound and outbound ACLs for all the impacted workloads, and it did it dynamically based on that one natural language policy. We have a large SaaS provider here in the Bay Area, and they were looking at micro-segmenting one of their applications, and they figured out to do so, they were going to have to write 15,000 individual ACLs to make that happen. With Illumio, they wrote 40 natural language policies, and that brain went out and pushed out all the ACLs into all the most efficient enforcement points, and they were able to micro-segment their network. And the good news was, it never fat-fingered an IP address. It got the right answers on the first time, because we're using math and science to, what, to solve what was formerly a, a, a manual problem. Okay. How many people have Active Directory or know about Active Directory? Everyone, right? Okay, good for you. Uh, why, I showed you us writing a policy for a homegrown application. Let me show you how we can basically take the guesswork out of well-known off-the-shelf applications. We have security segmentation templates for well-known applications. And if you've ever thought about, and, and we're going to do a demo on this Active Directory cluster, thanks, um, on this Active Directory cluster here. And if you ever think about uh, domain controllers, they'll open up 20,000 high number TCP ports. Does everybody here know what every single TCP port that AD opens? Does everybody here know what every process AD uses that opens? You probably don't, okay? Here's the cool good news. We've done the work for you. And in our wheel of segmentation, we're now going to get to nano segmentation. Why is nano segmentation important? Everybody hear of this thing called micro services? Microservices are just a process running in a host. I'm going to show you how we do segmentation based on a process rather than a VM, okay? And we're, in this case, we're just going to do it on the domain controllers, but we can do it on microservices running inside containers too. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is uh, we see those domain controllers. Let's take a look at all the templates that we have. And you'll notice we have a pretty robust library of well-known applications and databases is a subset of them. Um, interesting thing here to point out, if you've read about all these database hacks that have happened recently, it's because people did not properly segment their databases, okay? Um, you can see we also have uh, SharePoint Exchange and this Active Directory cluster that we saw previously. So what I'm going to have Anoop do is he's going to go ahead and download and update the policies on those domain controllers. And when he does that, what's going to happen is we've done all the heavy lifting for domain controller to domain controller synchronization for all the ma major AD services as well as authentication services. That's sort of the easy way of saying it. Let me show you what the rules actually look like. So um, uh, Anoop's gone in there, and what he's done is you'll see some port protocol-based rules right here, but then at the very top, and some of them, we're actually enforcing on the path and the process. So no matter what TCP or UDP port that process forks up on, we will open it up. Um, so basically, we showed you how we can micro-segment and nano-segment your domain controllers from one another. And this is not just a point of enforcement. It's also a point of detection. So if we go back, I think probably Splunk has thrown an alert by now. Now, traditionally, if something happens behind your firewall, you generally don't even know when it's happening. But the thing thing is, we're not just a point enforcement. When something breaks policy, you'll sort of know about it. So we've probably thrown a bunch of alerts to Splunk, OK? And so I can now, it, Splunk will say, go log into the Illumio console. You can take a look at what's going on. And you're going to immediately notice that you're going to get some telemetry and information you normally wouldn't have, because usually people are blind behind their firewall. In this case, I believe that one of our workloads has probably broken the policy that we had formally created for it. Let's go ahead and take a look there, Anoop. And so in this case, there's been a cyber attack. So one of our workloads has broken policy. Now, traditionally, we wouldn't, e we wouldn't even know about it. But with Illumio, you can not only know that it happened, and we're visualizing now what it actually did. And you can see it did sort of broke this quarantine. Remember, red lines indicate traffic that you are not allowing. So what do you normally do? You call up your vCenter person but we'll ho and hopefully freeze that VM. Well, well, what if it's a bare metal server? What if it's running an Amazon? What if it's running an Azure? Who do you call? Okay, there's a security problem. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you what Anoop's actually going to do. Anoop has created this quarantine zone up there, and he's going to drag that host up there. And he made a policy that says the only way to get into that host is via SSH, OK? So now the security team is my best friend. I call up and say, dude, you got to log into this. There's a problem, OK? Now, that's not the best part about it. You can see the rule up there. It's actually SSH is the only way in. The coolest part about it is that very simple motion that he did 
every other host that was formerly allowed to talk to it is now shunning it, okay? So we rewrote the, it's now not allowed to talk outbound or take inbound connections from it. Very cool stuff. We've shown you how we can visualize your application dependencies. We demonstrated how we can do micro and nano segmentation. And we just showed you how we can detect a breach when it's happened. And this is the cool thing about adaptive segmentation. I want to bring up our wheel of segmentation one last time. And so we've shown you coarse grained environmental separation. I did the uh, micro segmentation for that point of sale application. I showed you nano segmentation for your domain controllers that could be a microservice also running in Docker. If you look at your options of how you would do segmentation, let's compare and contrast, okay? If you did this with the network using your switches and your infrastructure, it can only take you so far uh, down the wheel of segmentation because you can't move that switch into Amazon and it certainly lacks the context of what's going on inside of the host and it can't get into, the, if you can't get into solve your container problem. If you think about the hypervisor, yeah, it gets you a little bit further, but once again, you can't move your hypervisor into Microsoft and certainly can't do it in Google Compute, nor can you do it inside of Amazon. Only a product like Illumio can give you coarse grain segmentation, micro segmentation, nano segmentation, and even user segmentation based on what users are allowed to talk to writing inbound and outbound rules, which is another demonstration we could do for you here today. Find someone with an orange shirt on, get your badge scan. We always give away the best shirts at the show. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I run product management for the company. Thank you.